Hey guys, Portia here with another episode of Ask Portia. Now remember, if you would like for me to see your questions or rather if you'd like for your questions to stand out, go ahead and hashtag Ask Portia and then perhaps they will end up in a video. I have my notes here, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, first question, what kind of heat press machine are you using and any advice for someone new to heat press? Guys, I am using the Rakoma 16 inch by 20 inch press. Now it is a little bit of a larger um, heat press and it's ideal for t-shirts, hoodies, and like other apparel. But of course you can do smaller items on there as well because you have enough space. Now the what I've come to learn about Rakoma is that they are known for their durability as well as their quality, which equals dependability. So I've, I have had this press for a bit over a year and I have not had any issues with it whatsoever. Um, a couple of things that I actually like about the press is its digital display. So there's a touch screen and you are able to navigate through the settings that way. Um, and it's very, very easy to use. And you're also able to set parameters and also save those parameters, i.e. Um, we're gonna sublimate on this temperature when it comes to uh, socks, or we wanna set it for X amount of time or anything like that. So you can set what the item is, the actual temperature itself, as well as the amount of time. So when you turn your press on, go straight to the parameters, and then you are able to set the machine up that way. Um, I also like that the uh, platen itself or the machine itself is adjustable. Uh, that's one of the things I found about the various heat presses. One of the um, things you wanna pay attention to when you are purchasing a heat press is adjustability because sometimes you need um, little pressure. Um, more pressure, firm pressure, and if you can't adjust it, that may make that press a little bit limiting. Also, with the model that I have, it has the slide out drawer. I don't even know if that's the right terminology for it, but I like it because it allows you to kind of work on the platen and in that space without being too close to the heat press. So that's a pretty dope feature. Now, you are able to uh, pretty much press like a wide variety of materials when it comes to this type of press. So it is very versatile. So I have found myself doing t-shirts and hoodies like I mentioned earlier, but I've done tote bags. I have done pillowcases uh, for like um, on my couch, so like throw pillows. Um, I have used it, of course, with sublimation. I think I do the majority of that well, the most of the things that I do is sublimation. I've also used it with my vinyl and also the DTF uh, um, films as well. So very, very versatile. Was able to get through all those materials without a problem. I've even sublimated glass and wood as well. So that's a really good thing. Now, um, advice to beginners. One of the things that I always say uh, for a beginner, now whether you're a hobbyist or you may move your hobby into um, a small business, think about what it is that you're gonna be doing. So when you purchase the press, is this something that I can grow into? Or do I already know I am only gonna be working with one material. I'm just gonna be pressing t-shirts. I don't need to adjust the pressure. I don't need a large platen. Um, those are things to think about. But um, if you are going into like business and it's gonna be a small business, I would definitely say start small uh, when it comes to um, the type of things you will be pressing on your heat press. The reason why I say start small is because you want to get to know your machine. So whether or not it has a ton of features or it is a straightforward heat press machine, start small. So um, a smaller project is gonna give you an opportunity to test temperature, time, and pressure. Because just because you read, oh, this should take 400 degrees on 100% polyester for a hoodie, that might not mean that your particular machine is gonna work that way. So I always say, 
do a sample size before you really dive into it. Um, and as you're diving into it, that sample size should be like a scrap. We all have scrap t-shirts laying around and uh, different scrap materials because you don't really want to get into like wasting <laughs> materials, guys. And the reason why I'm laughing is because when I started out, it was just like, oh, this is garbage, this is garbage. And you're gonna wanna give yourself that time to test and try out. Don't just, just go headlong into a project and say, nope, I got this, I'm reading the instructions. And cause you have read the instructions before and they have not turned out the way you want it to because you gotta get to know that machine, do some tests and then go from there. Um, also, Please, 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 guys, safety first. Um, the press is extremely hot. And you, I know that's probably something I would have to say, but if you're new to this, you may think that the heat is like contained in like one area, but at times the top can get hot as well as the platen itself. So, which is why I like the pullout drawer because you are staying safe and you are able to stay away from it. Even on other models, the platen kind of, I mean, I'm sorry, the heat part can swing away. So safety first. And then guys, so at the end of the day, I think the Recoma, the larger press, the 16 by 20, is good for both beginners and experts alike. It is going to give you quality, ease of use, as well as versatility, as long as you take the time to understand and know the materials you're working with, you are always going to get a good result. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and move on. And remember, for your question to stand out, just go ahead and hashtag it, ask Portia. And then, like I said earlier, you might end up in the video. The next question is, where do you design your images? So I like to use Canva. You guys, if you've been rocking with me for a while, you may notice that that is my go-to uh, place to design. Now, I will say at times I do cre use Cricut Design Space, but I don't pay for it because it's more of a supplemental thing. And then I do use it like to cut vinyl and things like that. But my main go-to is going to be Canva. So Canva is very easy to use for people who are beginners as well as experienced designers. So I call it, it's, it's, it's very, very user friendly. And you are able to design from your computer as well as your cell phone. I have even, there have been times where I've been sitting here at the computer, I'm designing, I'm like, oh, I need to make a thumbnail, but my picture is on the phone. So I'll pull up the Canva app on my phone, upload it to the project that I'm working in, and I look over here and it's right there. So I love the way it communicates between the um, computer as well as your device, um, um, cell phone and then a laptop and a tablet. It is, you're able to use it on any of those um, type of tools. Now, the templates that are preset in Canva, there's a wide variety. So when I first started using it, it wasn't like um, a lot on there, but the templates do help you in your design it can like help you with sizing and uh, different things like that so sizing t-shirts sizing um on coffee mugs so like um you are able to go in there and visually see what your design is going to look like with the templates so another one of its functionalities that i like is the drop and drag you're able to literally highlight whatever feature you want feature or element and drag it to wherever you need it to be on your design so like i said it doesn't it's not like rocket science or you don't have to like literally go to youtube to learn how to use canva or even read a book it is extremely friendly for um first time users the editing tools guys is like it's 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 right there on the left hand side of the screen and you, you don't need, again, a, a whole 100 page book to figure out how to use it because it's pretty much click and play, if that even makes sense. Um, you're able to just get in there and start right away creating things. And of course, the more you use the tool, the more you learn, the more you understand. 
So another thing that I like about Canva is we have the Canva Pro and then we have Canva Basic. With the Pro and Basic, you are still going to get a lot of pre-installed images, the graphics to use in your design. Now, Pro is definitely going to give you a little bit more, let's say, fancier, more detailed images or graphics, maybe videos, or maybe it's like colorful, it's popping, it's something like that. But you still can use Canva at its very basic, basic um, installation and walk away with a very beautiful design. So that is something that I, I really like about it. And the other thing that I like about it is that you are you get the palette when you go into a Canva. So you get the, the canvas and you are able to put things in quickly so you can work hours on that design or with the pre-installed templates and their pre-installed designs, you literally can search like t-shirt mug, um, tote bag, and you can see what other people have designed as well as what's also pre-installed by the program itself. And then literally get going just that quick. The other piece that I like about Canva, it is so easy guys to design, I'm sorry, to download your design or your images and move them onto another platform. So there have been several times that there is a an image in Canva that I like and I would like for to transfer it over into Cricut Design Space. It's like not a problem at all. I could transfer it as a ping, a JPEG, or even an SVG. So the two programs do communicate very well. All right, guys, so Canva is my go-to tool because I think it is great for professionals as well as beginners alike. So it has features to satisfy you at every level. Um, also, it allows you as like creatives to get inspiration or if you don't necessarily need inspiration and you want to uh, grab and go and get a project or rather a design that's already ready for you, you can totally do that. Here is our next question for Ask Portia and remember to always use that hashtag Ask Portia so that I can find your questions. And the question is, are the mugs safe to use in the dishwasher and or the microwave for coffee? Now this question came from a video where I had created a mug the base was alcohol inks. Then I did a layer of vinyl. And then from there, I coated it with um, resin, epoxy resin to protect it. So the short of it is going to be no. So you can put coffee in it, but you do not want to put the mug in the microwave or in the dishwasher. So um, because it is coated in epoxy resin, you want to think about the heat sensitivity. So if you put it in the microwave, it can cause like a breakdown in the outside coating. It can soften under the heat. And then if you put it in the dishwasher, the dishwasher can begin to create wear on the actual outside coating itself. So one of the things I will say is when I make something for someone, um, i.e. the sublimated tumbler, or if I'm putting rhinestones on there, uh, vinyl, or even um, epoxy coating, I say handmade means hand wash. That is going to ensure that you get the longest um, durability out of the, the mug itself. So another thing is potential discoloration. So that high temperature in the dishwasher or even the microwave can discolor the item and make it look yellow. We, we definitely don't want that. So um, when you give it as a gift, again, hand wash. The steam of the uh, dishwasher also can like add moisture to the piece itself and then it can actually seep into the resin coating which can lead to um, like clouding and like a cracking of the actual um, resin layer itself and again we don't want that now putting it in the microwave as well can lead to the warping of it and like it can end up the um, 
the layer of epoxy resin can end it up can end up warping and bubbling and peeling and then it's going to ruin the design and then it also might release fumes and we don't want that because we cook in there so even though i may be using full um food safe grade resin and of course you're going to want to use that on the outside of anything you may be drinking out of you don't want to reactivate it by putting it in the microwave once it is coated because it can release harmful fumes so you definitely want to make sure that you're not doing that and then make sure when you are coating certain items with um, epoxy resin, especially the ones you're going to be uh, eating and drink, drinking out of, that it is food safe. And like I say, at the end of the day, if it is handmade, be sure to remind yourself to hand wash. And if you are doing this to sell, be sure to place a sticker or a little card um, with the product so that your customer knows that this should be um, hand washed as well okay guys that's all i have for you today i just want to share with you all another set of questions from ask portia and remember to get your questions to stand out just go ahead and hashtag ask portia in the comment section and i will be able to find you if you got any questions or concerns emotional outbursts let me know found this video helpful and just plain old entertaining could you go ahead and give it a like but guys remember stay colorful stay creative and always find joy in the little things you do until next time peace